welcome to today's broadcast of North Idaho College Public Forum. The crew is comprised of NIC television students and your moderator is North Idaho College political scientist Tony Stewart. Our guest today is Euron Sforre, who is with us visiting uh, on our campus and has been speaking to our community and we're very happy to have him on our program. He has been a member of Israel's Central Police Unit and he is known according to his resume as a person who is an expert on international security matters specializing in the problems of terrorism and anti-terrorist activities. He is in the United States at this time where he is studying political science and communications and writing a book about the problem of terrorism. He is also listed as a uh, security consultant. He has been educated at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and Melbourne University in Australia. We're very happy to have you on our program and welcome to our state. Hi. And I'm very happy to welcome two members of the panel to question our guest today. Uh, to my left are two attorneys in Idaho, uh, Janelle Berg and Glenn Walker, and I shall ask Janelle Berg to commence the questioning. You've been a visitor here on the campus talking about terrorism. What are your credentials and what is your background that led you into this very interesting field? How did you become involved in the field of terrorism? Um, I was born, in fact, on a, on a kibbutz called Gvulot. <coughs> Gvul meaning in Hebrew borderline. So I was born about uh, a stone's throw away from Gaza. Seems that I, I have met terrorism almost from birth. As an Israeli living in Israel, uh, terrorism has been a fact of life. Uh, at a certain stage, like every young Israeli boy, I joined the Israeli army. Participated in a, in the, as a paratrooper in uh, various uh, raids and um, skirmishes with uh, terrorist groups, as, my, as well as fighting in uh, two of Israel's wars. Later on, um, I studied uh, the international problem of terrorism at the Hebrew University under Professor Harkabi, and um, a stage later I joined the Israeli Central Police Command Unit, which was called Ayichida Merkazit. Uh, I would think it would be roughly the equivalent of your FBI, although it's a, tif it's a, it's a different uh, setup. But um, And uh, I've been traveling around your country and lecturing on, on the international problem of terrorism. Perhaps one of the things we ought to do before we go further is kind of define what is terrorism. I think it <coughs> conjures up in all of our minds certain images and certain events that have occurred in the history of the world. But yes, you know, I, I agree. How, I, do I, you, how do you define it? Any group of people who decide that uh, their aims and their goals will be achieved by terrorizing people is, is to me, a group of terrorists. We have a tendency to, to simplify things by, by looking at people who we like as freedom fighters and by guys who we dislike as terrorists. Uh, I don't see any distinction, and I don't see a distinction in goals or in people who have of any specific religion or, or bent. When people kill other people and uh, be it under the gaze of, of the world and, and under various disguises, it's a crime. And those criminals are at the moment known as terrorists because it's more convenient for us to think that what they're doing has got, um, has got a political uh, point behind it. Uh, a lot of those uh, so-called freedom fighting groups are groups of thugs who believe that by um, killing enough people and bringing enough havoc to the world, they will uh, achieve their aims, while uh, democracy will eventually sit back and say, OK, you beat us. And uh, terrorism is terrorizing, terrorizing people uh, without uh, any distinction. Glenn Walker. Well, Israel is, a, is an ally of the United States and a very important ally, and we are for them. But uh, your own government has been criticized, uh, members of your government, because they themselves were so-called terrorists. Uh, how, 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 does the, uh, is, how do the Israelis answer that? Uh, there is no answer. When, uh, when uh, a gentleman by the name of Menachem Begin or Itzhak Shamir were fighting for what they believed is uh, the right cause at the time, uh, which was getting the British uh, forces out of Israel. Uh, they uh, used terrorist methods, which uh, have been used all over the world. Uh, there is uh, there's no denying the fact that uh, if, if you are part of a, of a group of people who eventually benefited from terrorist acts, you might look at it in, uh, in a different manner. But um, I don't think that anyone will will disagree with the fact that many of the acts done by 
the Irgun and the Lehi, which uh, were, um, uh, which are called by the Israelis freedom fighting organizations, some of these acts today would be called terrorist acts. It, uh, in war, like in war, unfortunately. And many of the acts today of various other organizations uh, in Zimbabwe, which to, uh, in Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe, in the Basque region in France, in, in, uh, in Cyprus, in, in, in uh, Turkey, in Japan, all over the world there are tens of terrorist organizations that believe that what they're doing is, is good for their people, even if, while they're doing it, many of them harm their own people, their own people that they seek eventually to, to govern or to help. Are we at a state in our society, in the world society, that this is now a fact of life, that we will always have to deal with this, in your opinion? Always is difficult to think, but I don't think that terrorism is, uh, is going to go away in the near future. Terrorism, is, terrorism has become extremely popular, and I say that uh, rather cynically, popular in the sense that it has shown to be more and more effective. It is getting quite good results in the fact that um, all one has to do is, is kidnap a plane or blow something up and immediately it will be covered worldwide because there is almost an undying uh, interest and in, in need for, for more and more action stories. And uh, if, uh, if a gentleman just picks up a gun in the middle of the street and shoots a boy, uh, he'll be called a murderer and he'll go to jail and there'll be local news. But if the same gentleman does the same act but with the heading of a PLO member shoots someone or some other terrorist organization does something, he will become big news because that all of a sudden gets a political bent and becomes an international event. Can you help our audience uh, try to picture a typical, if you can get one, a typical terrorist in the world today? Terrorist. Uh, if, <laughs> if it were that easy to, to, to draw a profile of a terrorist, uh, I think many of the airports would be more secure. I would, however, think that the most of the terrorists, to our great dismay, are the same young men and young women who, um, who you see in your local neighborhoods. I, there is a tendency to, to try and underestimate the intelligence of the terrorists or at times glorify them, especially if you see those uh, badly made movies in which the hero needs uh, for, for eventually Rambo to get up and beat someone or Charles Bronson or Clint Eastwood to rid the world of terrorism. He needs guys who are at least his equal and who are as, as bad as him and as clever as him um, to, to do the deed. I usually tend to think that most of the terrorists are of a certain age and I would be very hard pressed if I were to, to, to pinpoint, but I would think that a lot of the people joining terrorist organizations are in the early 20s and maybe up to the mid 30s, but no more. A lot of the leaders of terror, terrorist organizations are obviously much older and they know the ropes. Uh, uh, you would be very hard pressed to find a terrorist leader who, um, who would be in the action because he's got a lot of recruits. Um, an important factor about terrorism is because there is no specific guy who joins terrorist organizations, the fight against terrorism is very difficult. There, there is no, um, no profile for a crack addict, There's not, uh, there is no profile for a specific guy who, is, uh, who drinks too much, and it's very hard to specify a, a terrorist. However, if you went with, uh, with a ruler and tried and sort out um, statistically who are the people who join terrorist groups, usually they would be from specific neighborhoods, usually from, from minorities within their own country who feel that uh, they're not getting the right break. And it might be a religious minority or a minority uh, in, in political opinion. I would like to talk a little bit about, the, I, I know you don't get involved a lot with identifying what the terrorist groups are uh, individually, but speaking of the whole field of terrorism, do we have a, a rather large number operating in the world, or what kind of numbers can we put behind organized I, terrorist I groups? I would think that at the moment a lot of terrorist organizations are, are flourishing. Flourishing because it's become, first of all, a lot of uh, South American groups who are just simple drug dealing groups are calling themselves terrorists. because. Uh, being called by your neighborhood guy as a drug dealer is uh, not, a, not a nice thing. But when all of a sudden you say, I'm a freedom fighter, that has got a different connotation. So why do you, drug, uh, why do you traffic drugs? Or why do you cause so much harm? By the, well, it's for the good of the cause, and it's for us getting money so more people will join us, et cetera, et cetera. I think that in the world, if, if you were to count, I would think that almost every country in the world, even not even barring Scandinavia or Holland, 
there is a terrorist organization, at least one if not more, uh, acting within that group. Now, the interesting fact is that a lot of the countries who deal very harshly with their own terrorist organizations seem to be much more lenient towards other terrorist organizations. I mean, the Italian Carabinari dealt very harshly and very brutally with their own Red Brigades, and killing them uh, very, very, very tough measures. On the other hand, the same government let the, the killers of the American uh, and the hijacks of the hijackers of the Kilalaro go free because some technicality and because they believe that they were freedom fighters. So there is a bit of a problem there in international recognition of terrorist organizations. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I interpret from what you're saying that there's been somewhat of a different uh, interpretation in this country about terrorists that, that oftentimes have been advertised that they're always motivated by politics and political goals. And we've, I'm really getting at a question dealing with media coverage. And there's been a lot of debate in this country that uh, if there wasn't so much attention given to their political ideas and so forth, uh, that it might uh, help check that. But I sense from what you're saying that uh, that's far too limited definition of terrorism. I, I, tend to, I tend to agree that many times we look at terrorism in a very simplistic manner because there is somehow, it's easier to deal with. I mean, uh, again, if you talked about the Holocaust and you said six million lives, you can't even fathom that. But when you talk about the death of one child, that we can deal with. In terrorism, I think it's very close to that. In terrorism, there is a sense that um, we want to understand why does a young guy board a ship like the Achille Laro and take an old infirm man in a wheelchair, beat him over the head and throw him overboard? Or why do a group of thugs in an, in an hijacked TWA plane in Beirut beat a young, uh, a young uh, Navy guy, beat him to death? And w when it's one person, we seem to be able to, to deal with the problem more than when it's big masses. Uh, the reality is that somehow, the terrorist groups are getting a better break than you and I because, again, the coverage of the media is uh, more, more towards covering groups with something that you can put your teeth in. Again, if you and I walked out and committed a crime and we, we were even uh, crazy enough to commit murder, that would be a local news and somehow um, we would either go to jail or not, and, but that will be a local trial. If we did it as members of an organization, we would be the same act exactly, we would become world famous. Not even America, we would become world famous. And because we're the news people are starved for, for, for I don't know if the word is gimmicks, but, but puts to something to latch onto. Now, people have said many times, why don't we just cut the coverage of, why, doesn't, why don't we stop covering uh, terrorist events? Or at least stop covering terrorist events in real time. Meaning, real time meaning Peter Jennings says, okay, we're going now directly to Beirut. And when the cameras are in Beirut and the guy knows that he's being tra uh, transmitted at that moment to, to the whole of America, he will do something crazy which he wouldn't do otherwise. Well, the debate is very, it's very difficult to, to measure because if you say, okay, we will not cover any terrorist event that has got less than 10 people dead, they're going to kill 11. And if you say, well, we're not covering anything less than 100 people, they'll kill 101. The problem is not in our coverage of it and not even in the media's role in it. The problem is understanding that most of these terrorist organizations are very much just bunches of criminals who are under different, I mean, if you think that terrorism is only people with, uh, r with headgears called kafirs who run around with Kalachnikovs, uh, five days ago in, in, uh, in the middle of New York, a bunch of uh, close to 18 young men of uh, 14 and 18 raped and beat a woman almost to death. I think that is very much a terrorist act, <laughs> terrorizing people and killing them for nothing, for no, no apparent reason. Thank you. Janelle Berg. What kinds of actions, if any, can governments take to cut down on terrorism? How can we both educate people and keep other people from joining terrorist groups? What kinds of actions can a government take? It's a tough question. Is there anything in your opinion that can be done? It could, but, but uh, the measure, uh, measures that one would, s would think about are usually extremely harsh. Uh, a democracy has a problem. A democ I mean, a, in countries like Nazi Germany, there were very hardly any t acts of terrorism. Why? Because if one terrorist just walked up to a German officer and shot him, within, within an hour, a truckload of German soldiers stopped at a nearby town, took out people, and shot them at random. And then you said to yourself, well, I, I don't want to be a terrorist because I might want to kill Germans, but who knows, maybe my mother and dad will be killed tomorrow by these crazy Germans. So there is a way of containing terrorism when you become crazier than them. But that doesn't happen in the Western world. It doesn't happen today, except in certain countries which... Uh, um, if, if one were to look at terrorism, there was a certain uh, rebellion in Syria uh, 
few years ago and uh, the, the president of Syria decided there'll be no rebellion and no terrorist acts in my country and he just entered the town of Hama which had an uprising of the Muslim Brotherhood and he massacred 20,000 people of his own citizens. So uh, very cynically one can say terrorism can be contained but not at the present moment and not in a democratic manner. I'm, I'm totally against advocating anything of that kind and in fact I think that the only way to beat terrorism is to be better than them, is to be willing to suffer at many times the cost, uh, the price of terrorism, but to, to keep democracy alive. And, and it is very difficult. I mean, if you want to fly from here to, to England, and you say to yourself, well, I'm not going to fly because I'm going to spend five hours in the airport being checked and rechecked, and then my luggage is going to be handled, and then I'll feel uncomfortable, I, and th therefore I'm not going to go. By you not going, you, in fact, are letting the terrorists win. Because when you say, oh, I, instead of going to France, I'm going to go to Disneyland because it's simpler, you have let the terrorists win a victory, and I think they shouldn't win moral victories. And we have to pay the price, which is at times living uncomfortably. But <laughs> amongst the list of problems that we have in our unfortunate world, where AIDS and, and drug, <laughs> drug driving and drugs are prevalent, terrorism will have to be viewed as another problem. To you have to learn to deal with it and live with it, unfortunately. Do you believe that such things as airport checks and an increased security at airports is helpful in containing it's terrorism? It's helpful in containing, uh, in containing terrorist, events, uh, terrorist events against, air, uh, against airplanes. It's not, it, uh, I think it, it has got nothing to do in actually stopping terrorism. Uh, one has to understand why are airports such great targets of choice? Because they're international. Uh, let me explain. If you or I, again, <laughs> You as an American walked on uh, in the street here, and all of a sudden uh, a car hit you, and then you were badly hit. It's a problem, but this is a local problem where you were hit by a car, or someone else was hit by a car. If some, if you as an American tourist walk down the streets of uh, Paris or in the middle of Beirut or in the middle of Spain, and someone kidnaps you, you stop being your own citizen, and you've become in that instant where you were kidnapped, you are in fact wrapped by the American flag. All of a sudden, you become America. They didn't kidnap you because of your name or because of your eyes or hair, they kidnapped you because you were an American and all of a sudden you become an international problem. Within a minute the President of the United States will know about you and your family and what you did and why you were kidnapped. So the international aspect of terrorism is what, um, what this is all about. It's not about the individuals dealing in terrorism. Glenn Walker. The American government always looks to public opinion as, it, uh, as a barometer of its own actions. Uh, what can the American government do uh, in, in that area, uh, as you say, if we, if we have an accident here, we're, we're concerned about that accident, but we have all kinds of other problems. What can the American government do? Uh, or should the American government do anything to motivate its own citizens with regard to this problem of terrorism? I'm, uh, I, I don't feel uh, that I have the expertise to tell the American governments what to do. I, I do, I can give you an example. I think that uh, in Israel, for instance, where I come from, uh, terrorism is viewed, unfortunately, as a as a part of life. It, it, it is as such, it's ingrained in almost everyone. You go to the theater and your bags are checked. You go into, uh, into a supermarket and someone leaves a bag within a minute. There'll be a bomb squad and they'll blow the bag. 99% of the time it'll be someone's eggs and milk who, that were blown up. People have got to be more aware. People have got to be also willing to take, uh, to pay the price of protecting themselves. Now many times it means that it's uncomfortable. I mean in Israel many times you are searched you go off a bus and someone does, you don't like someone's look, you will tell the bus driver and the bus driver with the whole bus will stop at the nearby, uh, at the nearby police station and, and the guy will be checked. I mean, there are prices in which you cannot believe that would happen in America. In America, a guy didn't like the guy sitting next to him, we would not stop at the, at the station because there'll be a lawsuit <laughs> from, from here to tomorrow. And one of the prices in fighting, demo uh, fight in democracy, fighting terrorism, is a willingness of all the citizens of that country say, listen, we have to pay the price of more vigilance and to give away some of the liberties. The liberty to walk down the street without an identification paper is uh, uncommon in Israel. In Israel, everyone walks around with, a, with an identification paper because there are terrorists and because if you are capped or if someone stops you, if a policeman stops you, you can pull out an identification and say, this is me. And here in America, a policeman can't, can't just come up to you and say, listen, I don't like your face, so I think you're a terrorist. Show me some ID. Do you see trends worldwide of increasing terrorist yes. activities? Yes, very much so. I think that the IRA have escalated their fight. I think that France has been suffering from terrorism. Funnily enough, as an Israeli, everyone probably usually expects the Israelis to be the hardest hit by, by terrorism, and it's not so. I think that 
statistically we're probably number six or seven. I think the hardest hit by terrorism are the Americans, who have, who have probably retaliated the least. And then come the French and German and Italians, etc. Um, the trends are that more and more terrorist organizations are becoming much wiser, and they also understand that killing their own people and blowing up a supermarket in the middle of a town where, where people are, uh, have got hard lives anyway does not really uh, affect them as much as fighting the, what, the enemy. The IRA have now gone into a campaign where they specifically target British soldiers. And they've been doing it extremely violently, very effectively, but they have been targeting the soldiers as a target, not regular people as they did a couple of years ago. And I think their campaign is becoming more, not accepted, but more less frowned upon by some of the Irish people, unfortunately. I also think that the successes of the, the political successes of the PLO and Arafat sp specifically have caused many people to say, well, maybe there is a legitimate point, and maybe by him being a terrorist for so many years and all of a sudden uh, disclaiming terrorism, maybe that's the right way to take. But uh, obviously, I don't. I, I disagree with all terrorism, so I wouldn't wouldn't say it's successful one way or another. For those who have to combat terrorism within governments, such as our own country, and as you've indicated, that oftentimes when these acts take place and they will use spray paint, paint and so forth to indicate what they are. Sometimes that uh, those actions are being done by an organization that has certain political agendas. Other times you s you've indicated it's drug dealing, whatever. Are governments very good at distinguishing all the motives behind that particular group and what they're doing? It's very difficult. I would say that, that the answer would be no. No, because it's even difficult because the guys themselves don't know what they want. Mm -hmm. Most of the terrorist organization, in my belief, start off with a certain political agenda. But life changes when you're when you are barefoot and you're 25 and you're a leader of a small band. Uh, you're different than when, uh, by the age of 30, you you've got five Mercedes Benzes and you've got bodyguards and you've got a house in Monaco and a house in London. You've got enough money to splurge and you have uh, the amenities that come with having a lot of money. And life all of a sudden changes and then you say to yourself, well, I might have been fighting for a cause for a while, but now life has changed and I'm not sure if the cause will arrive, if my lifestyle will be will be as powerful as this. So I do think that a lot of these organizations uh, along the way change and the leaders uh, feel that uh, they are threatened, etc. Yeah. So the problem is that very few of these organizations actually stay true to their cause. And uh, it's known, uh, a known fact that many of the organizations along the way lose their, although they were doing violent acts under the political name, but they were more political. Some of them become more and more mafia-like more and more violent and, and more and more orientated towards the, the result of getting more money, getting more power with the money, etc. You've, you've done a very clear job today in our lecture on campus of explaining how the leaders of some of these organizations use such young people as 13, 15, 17 to do the violent acts for them, uh, oftentimes dying uh, when they do those acts. And if not, even when captured, they will not identify leaders. So is that one of the problems in combating terrorism, not being able to get individuals to uh, talk about the leadership? I think uh, a problem, the problem with uh, fighting terrorism is that I do believe there is enough intelligence out there. I mean, I, I, I would have to believe that most of the serious, uh, the big governments of the world know enough about the terrorist organizations in which they are fighting against. I don't think that the Israeli government would know much about terrorism in Tibet, but that has got no effect on terrorism. I do, however, think that most of the people in Tibet would know about that, as much as the Israelis know about the, the PLO and the other organizations. The information is not the problem. Uh, it is a problem to know exactly who is where and when. The problem is the willingness to go in to actual battle and to situations in which, while you're trying to hit the bad guys, a lot of good guys will die. Your, your own soldiers will die. And if it, this is, for instance, let's, let's assume that the uh, German government wanted to annihilate a certain terrorist organization which is in a safe house in the heart of Munich. Only in the movies, only the bad guys get hit. In, in reality, if they went in and stormed the place, good, nice citizens would die, and uh, houses would blow up, etc., etc. And then the question is, what is the price worth? Uh, the mayor of Chicago, had, uh, the mayor of Philadelphia, had the problem. He wanted to get rid of seven guys, I think, and then four years ago, and he almost burned half of, of the of the priest, uh, half, half the buildings in the street. <laughs> While he was trying to do a good thing, he almost killed a lot of people. So the question is, how much is the government willing to pay, and what is the price in which the government says, well, we won't pay it. We'll mm -hmm. have to keep on living with it. I do believe that the will, under certain conditions, and 
after certain terrorist acts, the government is willing to go further than it was willing to go before. For instance, at a certain point when things were really bad, the American government decided, yes, we will attack Libya and try and blow up um, some installations, maybe even get Gaddafi. But that happened after a certain event in which the American will was there. It couldn't have happened a year later because you don't remember it. News happens so fast that there is no time to react. Mm -hmm. And the time of reaction has to be immediate. Otherwise, it becomes, hey, that's strange. Why do we send planes against such a nice country? Janelle Berg. We talked a minute ago about who were targets for terrorism, Americans in particular. Do you see the location of terrorism changing? As there is a rise in terrorism throughout the world, do you see the location where it occurs changing somewhat? Do you think there's going to be more terrorism in the United States itself, as opposed to terrorism re uh, involving Americans worldwide? Or is um, it too difficult to identify the ter terrorists, or too easy to identify the no, terrorists? No, most of the terrorists are, uh, a, te a terrorist does not do any act without him specifically saying, I did it, because otherwise there's no point. Like the philosophy question, if a tree falls in the, in the woods, does it make a, make a sound? The important thing to understand is that terrorism is more effective, as I said before, against Americans outside of America than inside. As I indicated in my speech, uh, in a country where a guy walks into McDonald's and shoots tens of children, or a guy can walk up into a, in a, into a schoolyard and shoot kids in the head and then commit suicide, how, violent, how much more violent can you be? I mean, how much more can people be terrorized? In, in Los Angeles, if you get to walk down certain streets because a car at random will drive by and, and do a flyby, and kill you just because you walk down the street. That's a violent society in which terrorism is never there occurrence. Again, going back to that terrible event in, in uh, Central Park. So for terrorism to be effective and to, to shock Americans, the, it has to be done outside of America because inside it'll be, although it'll be under the banner of a terrorist organization, it'll be another day of violence. I do, however, think that th terrorism will probably uh, mainly Iranian and more Muslim terrorism will eventually be directed against America itself. Not so much because of the effect of terrorism on shocking you and me, but to show the great Satan that they can do it. Ms. Foray, I'm so sorry to interrupt. We're out of time. I wish we had more time. You've been most informative, and Thank I know you. the panel joins me in thanking you for being here. Thank you very Thank much. You. It was a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest uh, has been a member of the Central Police Unit of Israel, and we've been talking today about the problems of international terrorism. We hope you found this program informative. And I'd like to invite you to be with us again next week uh, when we'll discuss what we believe to be an important topic. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. North Idaho College Public Forum can be seen at the same time each week over this station. This production was videotaped earlier by an NIC student crew for viewing at this more appropriate time.